Sunday, I just wanted to say thanks. Uh, there's a lot of great stuff uh, going on. We had a lot going on Sunday, and so I appreciate you all sticking with me through a longer uh, sermon because I know it went pretty long. So uh, thanks for tracking with me in that. Uh, but if you remember, if you were there, if you weren't there, we're, uh, we're on the last part of this one part of the series, which Jeff taught on uh, believing in the triune God, uh, and then Brooke taught on behaving in fellowship, and we talked about last week, and then I taught on becoming a person of love. So not uh, not being loving or not uh, acting in love, but becoming a person of love. And so really the main idea that I went around was those born of God display the love of God through God's example and power. And uh, you guys know, I, you guys have probably wrestled with this too, but I wrestled a lot with this sermon. I think it was no coincidence that uh, so much stuff has been going on around the idea of love in our country even in the last week. And uh, so I, I did a lot of wrestling over what does it look like uh, for to for God's people to be people of love versus what there are lots of ideas around love. Um, and what is the way for God's people to love? Is that different than what the world would say is love? Um, and so I focus really around this main idea that I just said. And the text was 1 John uh, 4, 17 12. I'll read it for y'all. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. And this, the love of God, was made manifest among us, that God sent His only Son into the world, so that we might live through Him. And this is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love is perfected in us. And so I split it up really into three parts. Um, uh, that, that statement that I said, that those born of God display the love of God through God's example and power. And the first part was those born of God. So, so John is talking about a specific type of love. He's not just uh, using a, just a fluffy, without definition type of love. And, and he's talking about the first part is those born of God, that it's really only, he uses the positive and the negative. Those born of God can love because they know God. And those not born of God cannot love in the way that he's talking about because they don't know God. And so he's talking about a very specific type of love that can only come from a very specific type of people. And he uses this language of born of God. And uh, that really harkens back to John 3, uh, where he really reported when Jesus said, Nicodemus, you've got to enter the kingdom of God, you have to be born again. And I said an inappropriate word, what is inappropriate? Anatomically correct word that threw everybody off track, I'm not going to repeat uh, today. And, um, but really, that it's, it's, it's that it's only those that are born again, it's only those that have a personal relationship. We use 1 Peter 1 3 that in Christ uh, we are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we uh, that have been born again and have an active relationship and have been. Trusted in Christ uh, are those ones, and only are the only ones that can love in the way that John is going to continue to talk about. Um, and so, I'll talk a little bit about the language of that, but I won't go into that. Um, and so, this, the the, other, the next section I started on uh, was it, we love this way through God's example and through His power. And it's cool because we're the next question in my mind when I was going through this verse is what kind of love is He talking about? And instead of giving really a definition or characteristics, he just he gives this example. He gives the example. He gives the example of Christ, uh, that he came and died, that we could live through him, uh, that we are forgiven, that we, he is our propitiation. He's our atoning sacrifice. He paid the price for our sin. And so instead of really using uh, a definition or defining characteristics, he said, this is the example of love I want you to look to. This is the kind of love I'm talking about. And really, when you think about that kind of love, the, the love that actually that God extended to us, a God that extended love to un, the unlovable, to the people that were rebellious, to the people that we did he's made it real clear in the verse, we did not take the first step towards God and said, okay, since they're pursuing me, I'll love them, or they've kind of, they're kind of looking for me, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll love them. But really, we were rebellious and, and uh, enemies of God, as Ephesians talks about. And so, uh, so God loved us without us being any step to love him first. Um, and so this is where the divide of this love comes. Luke talks about uh, if you, or, well, Jesus talks about it in Luke. He says, if you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. 
Uh, and if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you for even sinners do the same? That's part of kind of the love that he's, Jesus is talking about and John's talking about here is it's his love that overcomes obstacles of hardships and uh, persecution and offense and even hate and, and, uh, and, and being enemies. It's a love that extends and it's actually it's not natural for humans. It's a God-like love as opposed to a worldly human-like love. And so I, I thought, I was thinking about it, I wanted to hash out what are some characteristics that Jesus showed uh, and when he, he's this ultimate manifestation of, of this love that John's talking about, what were some of the characteristics that were true of that? And so I listed off five of these characteristics, I'm going to blow through them quicker than it's probably going to be helpful, but um, I think they're helpful to mention. And I also mentioned a perversion, and so remember I'm trying to compare what is this love of God that we're supposed to have as a people of God? And, and then there's this, there's others' idea of love out here. And so what separates those? And so I'm talking about how did Jesus love, and then I'm talking about this perversion. How does it, how it, how does maybe the world, or how do even we see love in a way that is, I think, opposite of what Jesus is, is showing in his love? And so the first characteristic I thought of, and, and kind of have in here, is obedience. And really I talked a little bit about how Jesus uh, was obedient to the Father in his love for us. It was uh, a lot of uh, Jesus' motivation to come and be sent was at the command of the Father, of obedience to the Father because he loved the Father. And the perversion, uh, so the opposite of, of that kind of love, is just this, this idea of love. It's all about feeling. It's only, only about feeling, only about emotion, only about passion without um, obedience or commitment. And we, we have language like falling in and out of love and, and uh, things like that that, that support that, I think. Uh, it was the second one I talked about is it's set, Jesus' love or the love that we're called to is godly love is sacrificial, um, and really just talked about a little bit about how um, obviously uh, the sacrifice is a lot talked about in that verse. Uh, but the perversion, and I think we actually sometimes you love is sacrificially even the world does. But the perversion I think is is sometimes we have a convenient idea of sac sacrifice or. Um, I'll, I'll sacrifice my time when I have time, or I'll sacrifice my money for someone when I have money. Um, but just the, really the gap that Jesus came from of sacrifice is just unfathomably large. Um, being God to um, come being a servant for us, um, for sinners and his enemies, is uh, incredible. A uh, third one I touched on is uh, vulnerable, and I think this is a big one. Really because the act of stepping out in love is a vulnerable uh, thing in itself. And so when, when God actually took a step to love us, he took a risk. Because no one can truly love without the risk of being broken, of, of being hurt. And so in sending Jesus being the ultimate act of love, that actually was a trait that he, um, or, or a characteristic that he had in his love for us. And, and I mentioned a C.S. Lewis quote that I'm going to repeat because I think it's really worthwhile. And it talks about vulnerability. He says, uh, it's in his book, Before Loves. He says, to love it all is to be vulnerable. Love anything and your heart will be wrung and possibly broken. If you want to make sure you're keeping your heart intact, you must give it to no one, uh, not even an animal. Wrap it carefully around with hobbies and little luxuries. Avoid all entanglements. Lock it up safe in a casket or coffin of your selfishness. But in that casket, safe, dark, motionless, airless, it will change. It will not be broken. It will be unbreakable, impenetrable, and irredeemable. And so basically the, the idea behind that is if we were, were to love, that's the only way we can love is to be vulnerable. If we're not vulnerable, our heart will harden and so that our heart will change into something that is, uh, is not, it will not feel love, it will not give love, it will not receive love, it will just be hard. So the perversion there is, we see this a lot in ourselves even, it's just you don't, we don't need to bear our hearts or our souls. We don't need to let people into the fears that we have and the dreams that we have or the vulnerabilities that we have. Um, but in reality, we cannot love without letting people into those areas. Um, so, that's the third one. The fourth one is joyful delight. Um, real quickly, God just takes delight in us and loving us. Um, the perversion there is maybe we can think that love's only obedience. Um, it's just the commitment, but there has to be passion there. Uh, the fifth one, it, I spent a good amount of time on, um, but that Jesus' love, this guy's love, is truthful. Uh, it, it loves the truth. And we really look at Jesus. He called people uh, to repent. He, talked about how in the way, the truth, and the life. He preached a lot about hell and warned people a lot about hell. It's very truthful. He called people to follow him in a very specific and absolute way. Duval, who wrote the study, said love is a choice to do what God says is best for another person. And so the, the perversion, well, the, the opposite 
this godly love is just is just this um I don't know what's called tolerance. It's a it's a love that says I just accept you and don't really care what you do or don't really care about your actions um, or I will never speak against your actions no matter what you do and. And at first, that may even sound loving. You know, our culture actually teaches that as loving a lot of times. Um, but if we know God's truth, if we know what is the best for people, because God's truth is meant for the blessing and the flourishing of people. And so if we know that blessing, if we know that flourishing, if we know what's going to bring that about, and we decide to keep that from them, that is not loving. It's actually apathetic, and I would say even hateful. Uh, but we also do that in the church. Uh, we often run away from one another uh, if we speak uh, truth towards the area of sin or, or, uh, or, or vice versa, if that's to us, a lot of times we'll just hop to a different relationship or even hop to a different church uh, because we don't want to bear through each other in love, but we are given this truth to love one another, to build one another up in love and uh, faithfulness to walk with Christ. Whew, we'll do those really quick. Thanks for sticking with me. Um, so the last one is that we are to, to display the love of God. This is huge. Um, but really that when we are walking in this love that, that Jesus is talking about, uh, that John is talking about, that we are meant to not look, uh, not kind of love like God loves or anything like that, but, but even more, that people see God's love in us. So when we love one another uh, through sin, through hardships, through joys, through dreams, we are experiencing the very love of God, the very same love that God the Father has for the Son, for the Spirit, uh, and, and that is that same love that we're invited into. And vice versa, uh, those out. That's fine. <laughs> Someone's phone. That's my. That's my. I'm wrapping up here. My <laughs> no, that's great. That's kind of helpful. Actually, I shouldn't have called it out. I should have just kept it going. Uh, and so, but it's not just inside the church. It's outside the church. When people look at us and we're displaying the love of God to one another and to those outside of God's people, they are seeing the very love of God. And so, vice versa, when we are not displaying this love, they're, we are depriving each other and the world of seeing. The same love of God that the Trinity shares and interacts with one another in this great, this perfect unity. Um, yeah, that's about it. We kind of ended with the time examination. The big, the big thing at the end is just to remember that, that, that love, becoming people of love, is only a work of the Spirit changing our hearts. And so the, my really big takeaway was don't go away just with a laundry list of, I need to do this, this, and this, and this. And I think we should have some action points. But to remember that it is only God's Spirit that is going to change our hearts to become people of love. And so, to remember that we need to go through this action of surrender and confession and, to, and just um, dependence on the Spirit of God to work in and among us, especially in a culture that's so changing, and realizing how do we love each other well, but how do we love um, those in our culture and our world with the love of God, not a, a love that is lacking or a lesser love or, or a human cleverness or anything like that. So, great. How long did I go?